I was actually in Boy Scouts and we were on a camporee and it was on a Sunday and we were packing up heading out and it was down near Portland. Uh, we were on Scouters Mountain near Happy Valley and I just happened to have binoculars with me and we heard the mountain blue and we were at the top and uh, looked over there with my binoculars and it was kind of a hazy day a little bit from Portland and uh, it just looked like somebody had dropped the bomb like Hiroshima or something like that. It was unbelievable. I mean, we've seen previous eruptions, you know, in, in March and April, you know, it was much smaller. And uh, I was you know, kind of used to that, but this was, you know, a hundred times bigger than any of those previous eruptions, you know, 80,000 feet versus 30. And I actually ran into, uh, years later, about 10 years later, I ran into an old guy at a bicycle shop and he had this picture of the initial blast and it looked pretty close and I, so I asked him, so where was this taken? And he says, oh, that was May 18th and I was up there on the mountain off, on the North Toodle. They were camping with some friends and uh, having breakfast on the mountain blue. Didn't hear a thing and they were very close up there and uh, they just dropped everything and uh, hopped in an old station wagon and back then there were no paved roads. It was all gravel and dirt and hauled ass down, uh, you know, as fast as they could go without killing themselves as the lahar blew out and on the north toodle and took everything out behind them literally blew it out completely and, and they were lucky to survive and the way he tells it it sounds you know he, he looks you could see it in his eyes like he was a holocaust victim which is <laughs> about the best way i could describe it you could just tell it, it was pretty spectacular you know and i remember as a kid growing up seeing Mount St. Helens all the time is this perfect cone uh, for my grandmother's Northeast Portland. They used to call it the Mount Fuji of the West, but uh, it'll never be the same. I did climb it in 2000. Um, it was more or less a hike in the summertime. And then, it, so it was pretty neat to see the devastation, you know, and then I mountain biked for years and hiked around the devastation zones for since about 1990, different areas. Uh, pretty amazing to see the devastation and then it coming back you know, trees and the animals and everything like that. So it, it's a pretty amazing place and watching, you know, this rebirth, you know, the devastation and the rebirth of the mountain. And then when I saw the dome from the summit years ago in 2000, it was it was a pretty small dome. It was only like a thousand feet high or something like that. Now it's like a couple thousand feet. It's grown a lot, you know, since then. And the way of that comp and everything, it's gotten huge I think, over the years. So as the mountain's rebuilding itself. So it's amazing to see the transition over the years. These are the only images that exist of this catastrophic event. But this sequence was not shot by a video camera. Instead, it was created by USGS scientists and graphic artists based on a series of extraordinary still photographs taken by an amateur photographer named Gary Rosenquist. On May 18, 1980, he was standing 10 miles away from the mountain next to local resident Keith Ronholm. He was on a tripod with a motorized drive and just was and took a very much time-based sequence. I don't think he was trying to, to make a scientific record, but it turned out to be a very good record of the event, and I know it was used by many scientists to try to time the event and to measure how fast the, the landslide. Here's a Marble Mountain School Park, right?
This land is your land, and this land is my land. From California to the New York Island, from the Redwood Forest to the Gulf Stream waters, this land was made for you and me. I went a-walking that ribbon of highway And I saw above me that endless skyway I saw below me that golden valley This land was made for you and me Yeah, All right. comfort <laughs> <laughs> and Stinky feet <laughs> we were open the vents. <laughs> I roamed and rambled and I followed my footsteps to the sparkling sands of Hatchet. diamond. Hatches versus a and chainsaw. Big set. Go. And there it is. <laughs> that was a lot of work. The hatchet wins. <laughs> the hands down. The smell of fresh cut timber. The crash of mighty trees. I'm a lumberjack and I'm okay. I sleep all night and I work all day. He's a lumberjack and he's okay. He sleeps all night and he works all day. I cut down trees, I eat my lunch, I go to the lavatory. On Wednesday I go shopping and have buttered scones for tea. He cuts down trees, he eats his lunch, he goes to the lavatory. Badger. Mount St. Helens, March 20th. We've been hiking four hours and approximately 4.6 miles. Helens is just here. The weather's moving in. I'll probably get some snow. But I should be able to make it up there before then. Got a banana. Drive banana.
speaking of Boy Scouts, when I was in Boy Scouts that year, we were actually going to go to Spirit Lake that year. And of course, the mountain had other plans. <laughs> So I never got to go to Spirit Lake. So that's the only bummer about that one. Uh, it would have been nice to at least see the mountain before it blew up close. But uh, that was kind of ironic twist of fate. But uh, you know, uh, but 